Hey, I'm Luke, and today we're going to paint this. Today I wanted to explain my process for creating an image. So I made this game start idle screen, and I'm going to talk you through how I go about painting it. I like to start a lot of my illustrations off with a silhouette based thumbnail and that's sort of what I did here. I didn't do a bunch of thumbnails, but I'd already painted some study pieces to prepare for this one. I was confident enough with where I wanted to take it that I just started with a full size silhouette. The great thing about working in silhouette is that your, your mind can focus solely on the shapes you're creating, how they relate to each other and how best to use those shapes to convey the message of your illustration. It's easy to dive in and get lost in those details, the fun things, the rendering of a piece, and lose the overall vision of what you're working on. That's the most fun part of an illustration, in my opinion, but to avoid that, I use this silhouette method. Once I've established a silhouette that I like, I then start on breaking up those shapes into individual components, such as the inner details of the character. This is one of the more fun parts where I go in into character design and telling a backstory of a character through those designs, like the crystal motifs that I end up using throughout her armor to tie her into the scene and give her a potential reason to be in this cave. So I'm going in and figuring out the details of her clothing, working a bit on her face and trying to establish what the silhouette may have been showing. And another cool thing about working in the silhouette is the happy accidents that can happen. I've done this same process, but with a traditional medium so that I can use a tool that is awkward for me to draw with. And this often creates the best results. I personally struggle with using a brush pen, so it's one of my favorite tools used for character silhouettes. You know, the more awkward the tool, the more happy accidents you get as you go through different renditions of character silhouettes. I changed the design of her armor around a few times and decided to do a quick front on sketch to get some of those details out without worrying about perspective. That's something I do a lot um, is those study type sketches throughout my process of painting so that I can understand something better like the underlying anatomy or even just new designs. So the majority of time that I spend on this illustration is spent on the value phase of my process. I don't always start in grayscale, but I found that it helps me to focus on how the overall image will read. Not every artist begins their illustration this way, but it's been hugely beneficial to me in my process. I come from a background of graphite and ink, and my work turns out so much better when I can go back to those roots and really define the image through value before ever diving into color. The way I look at it, it's the value structure of an image that does the heavy lifting. Any image can be turned black and white, and if it doesn't read well at that level, no amount of color is going to fix it. Speaking strictly in the realm of you know representational art, as there's plenty of abstract paintings that rely on color entirely. Almost the entire lower third of this image is taken up by a large foreground element and compositionally I wouldn't normally do this but as you saw in the beginning of this video that area is being designated to the user interface that I will later be creating. I created this illustration in Procreate and here I'm just creating a mock-up of the play button that I'm going to come back in and create in Photoshop later. As you saw in the beginning of this painting, I established roughly five groups of values, the foreground, character, midground, background, and what I'll call the sky, even though it's just going to be atmosphere from deeper within the cave. Each level gets lighter in value as it moves further back in the image. And as I progress further into rendering, the areas that are closest to the viewer and of most importance will have the greatest level of contrast. These are some of the techniques I use to create successful imagery. Another technique that I established in the very beginning of this illustration is called flagging the head. It's a technique that the masters have used for years. An obvious example of this is how the early paintings of Christ or other important Christian figures are often depicted with a glowing halo behind their head. It's used to establish the most important characters in the scene or to simply direct the eye to the area of greatest importance. I'm trying to use it in a more subtle way just by putting the character against the lightest part of the background. And this also helps to showcase that silhouette that I established in the beginning. The reason I use this technique is like I mentioned that it establishes the most important character, but especially because I want to direct the viewer's eye to my character first. As an illustrator, I want to control my viewer's eye and move it around in the image how I want it to. Another way I control the eye is with the flow of my shapes. In this illustration, I'm using shapes to move the viewer's eye down the character, along the foreground to the crystals, then up the left side of the image, up the column there, and kind of in a spiral. 
This movement keeps the interest of my viewers on the piece and not shooting off of my canvas. I've noticed in my more recent illustrations that I've been relying too heavily upon my reference images, so to counteract that, I didn't use any reference for this illustration. And I'm sure it could have worked out better if I had, but I want it to be more of an exploratory piece and see how it came out. So at this stage, I'm just focusing on the rendering throughout the image. I've already pushed the environmental elements about as far as I'm going to take them. And now I'm spending my time on the character. The character design that I've chosen here is reminiscent of a World Warcraft-esque fantasy type character. I'm using, you know, large shapes for the armor, larger than I would for a more realistic image anyways. And to give interest to those large areas, I'm adding textures and wear and tear and the material of her armor, you know, just giving life and, and a backstory to the elements of her clothing. And Another thing I've done and I will do more of in this piece is add a good amount of fog and atmosphere to give the illusion of depth. I also use the fog to aid in the eye movement I talked about earlier. Something I noticed in my composition is that from a hierarchical standpoint, the crystals are about equal to the importance of my character. To fix this, I decided to enlarge my character to give her more of a dominating presence in the illustration. One of the many perks of working digitally. Another of those great perks is adding color to the black and white image with an overlay layer. When working traditionally, doing multiple color studies is time consuming. Our most valuable commodity is our time. You know, that's one of the major influences that pushed me towards digital art. I love working with traditional mediums, but the speed and ease that digital tools give me it just far outweighs the enjoyment that I get from working traditionally. I love working digitally. So I made a bunch of different color overlay layers to see which combination of colors I thought worked best with the image. And in a short amount of time, I settled on a split complementary color scheme of violet, a blue, green, and a yellow. With this color scheme, I wanted the two colors closest together on the color wheel, the blue, green, and the violet, to be covering 90% of the image, and the yellow color to be working as a pop color for the other 10%. It's basically just the 60-30-10 rule of design. So, for the majority of this process, I've kept all of my layers separate, working on them individually so that I could make easy changes. Now that I've got the color laid in, I duplicate my layer, merge the copy, and proceed to finish the illustration by painting on that one layer. With the illustration almost complete, I usually give it a break and come back to it another day to make sure I still like it. In this case, I came back to the painting and decided the middle stalactite was interrupting the flow that I was trying to establish. So I painted it out and called the illustration finished. Then I threw it into Photoshop and began working on the user interface. Now I'm not going to cover how I created those buttons in this video, but if that's something you guys would be interested in a full tutorial on, let me know in the comments. For this video, I don't even show the entire creation of the UI, I just wanted to give some context to the finished image. Another future video I could make is a tutorial on how I animated the finished image as I show in the intro of this video. It's something I do for work, it's something I like to do for my personal pieces to bring some life into them. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, I hope to see you next time.